Welcome to Tax Law GH and welcome to what should be our third and final part of series in capital allowances. What we are going to look at mainly is the special rules for petroleum operations and minerals and mining operations. These are quite advanced concepts in the topic of capital allowances. So let's start with petroleum operations first and then move to minerals and mining operations. So we are saying that a person who incurs a capital allowance expenditure in respect of a separate petroleum operation shall, during the year of assessment, place that expenditure in a separate pool of depreciable assets. The Commissioner General shall grant to that person a capital allowance with respect to each year at the rate of 20% using the straight line method. If you remember from I think part one of the capital allowance series, I mentioned that the rule for petroleum operations and minerals and mine operations is that they don't follow the general class one, class two, class three, class four, class five system. No. For petroleum operations, when you acquire a computer, throw it into one pool. When you buy a car, it goes into that same pool. Build the same pool. So it means every single depreciable asset owned by a petroleum operation or a business that is, is into the petroleum operations will be added to one pool will be added to one pool and then granted capital allowance at a rate of 20 percent what does this mean so we're saying that where an asset for which capital allowance expenditure has been incurred for a separate petroleum operation is disposed of or treated as disposed of during a year of assessment the commissioner general shall in computing accessible income from the separate petroleum operation for the year include consideration received for the disposal i want you to remember this when we get to mining you realize a big difference here the truth is to aid you in remembering or to help you memorize this to help you understand this for your exam and for practice purposes petroleum operations rules for capital allowances is similar very similar to mining or the minerals and mining operations but this third bullet point is one area where as you see very soon there's a big difference almost everything else is the same they all have a 20 percent straight line for both of them you put everything in one pool all assets and that so remember for a petroleum operations business when there is an asset disposal during the year you will include the consideration received for the disposal where would you include it watch it carefully in computing your accessible income for the separate operations for and petroleum operations you add the consideration received what does this mean you have petroleum operation you've disposed of or treated as disposed of any of your assets that was previously in your pool they are saying the commissioner general when he's computing your accessible income shall add the consideration received for the disposal what it means is the consideration received for the disposal will become an income line in arriving at your chargeable income for the period or to be technical arriving at your accessible income from petroleum operations for the year we are saying that when in a year of assessment an asset is partly used in a separate petroleum operation and partly used in another separate petroleum operation. So let's say you have one asset that is used in two separate um, oil blocks or oil fields. We are saying the Commissioner General shall apportion the capital allowance in the year between the two operations in proportion to the use of that asset in each separate petroleum operation. So let's say for some reason you own two oil blocks and you have one uh, mining rig that is used partly in um, oil block A and partly used in oil block B. If the proportion is 70% to 30% in respect of um, oil block A and oil block B, then what the Commissioner General will do is the cost, the capital allowance, everything will be apportioned in the ratio 70 30 between oil block A and oil block B. What this means is anytime you use an asset for more than one petroleum operation, the proportion in which you use the assets for the different petroleum operations will be used as a basis to prorate, to apportion the um, capital allowance and the costs and the retinal value across the different petroleum operations. 
key thing to remember here is that when there's a disposal, we include a consideration received in determining your income for the year. Remember that here we have one big pool where we, we throw everything in there, your laptops, your cars, everything will be in one big pool, 20% straight line. Then we are saying that where in a year of assessment, a person assigns a petroleum right. Here it means you can transfer your petroleum right of that person. The written down value of any capital allowance expenditure of that person at the beginning of the year is transferred to the assignee. Let me give you an example. Let's say you, you have a petroleum right over a particular oil field, over, or over a particular oil block, or over a particular exploration area. And for some reason, you want to transfer that petroleum right to another person so that they continue the um, oil exploration. Let's say you are tired of um, working in the oil and gas industry. So you want to assign your petroleum right to someone else, so you sell it. That's what it means technically. You sell your oil right to someone else. What we are saying here is that the written down value of all your capital allowance expenditure at the start of that year when you did the transfer will also be moved to that person. So it means when you are transferring the uh, petroleum right, you also transfer the written down value brought forward, which is the opening balance at, that, at the start of that year to the person you are assigning it to. Please remember this is very crucial. When in a year of assessment, a person assigns parts. So instead of, let's say, assigning your whole petroleum right to someone else, you are like, okay, you know what? I want to just kill down operations a bit. So let me apportion or assign half to someone else and retain half. What happened is that we are saying that the commissioner general shall apportion the written down value of the capital allowance expenditure between the proportion of the interest retained and the percentage of the interest assigned. So like I said, if you are written down value at the start of the year, the value is $100,000 and you are assigning 50% of your business, obviously, then it means $50,000 of the capital allowance expenditure will be assigned to the assignee, the person you are assigning to or selling to. So they take on that cost and then you retain the remaining $50,000 of capital allowance expenditure. We are saying where well, for the purpose of calculating the income of a person, a deduction is made in respect of capital allowance expenditure. A further deduction shall not be made in respect of the same capital allowance expenditure under any other provision of the law. All it means is you cannot take a deduction twice for the same capital allowance expenditure. Remember, this is very, very important. So these are the principles for petroleum operations. Let's move to mining operations and watch something. Um, before we get there, let's define a few things under mining operations. We are saying that unless the context otherwise requires, capital allowance expenditure means expenditure for which capital allowance are available under the third shadow of the Income Tax Act, which if you've been watching the um, reference section is what I've been referring to all this while. The third shadow of Act 896 is what deals with capital allowances. Um, written down value of the as um, asset means the cost less all capital allowance expenditure or granted to the person with respect to yeah, same thing, you know, um, pretty much, right? So let's go to minerals and mining operations now. Watch how similar they are. And if you like, if you remember what was on the screen for petroleum, you realize that it's very similar, apart from the third bullet I told you to take note of, which was in the petroleum operations. Here I'm saying that personally in case account allowance expenditure in respect of a separate mineral operation, during a year of assessment shall place that expenditure in a separate pool of depreciable assets same as petroleum so if you know that one just learn this one and the same thing the commissioner general shall grant to that person a capital allowance with respect to each year at the rate of 20 percent using the straight line method same as petroleum operations this is where things are different they are saying where an asset for which capital allowance has been granted is disposed of or treated as disposed of during a year of assessment, the Commissioner General shall, if the consideration received for the disposal exceeds the written down value of the assets, then he will include the excess in computing your assessable income of that person for the year. So what we are seeing here is that under minerals and mining, the law reverts the default position where we pick how much you sold it for and we deduct how much it cost you. Then if there's a profit, we add that profit to your income and tax you. This was what we did for the general industries. And the next one, if the written down value exceeds the consideration received, 
then he will grant you an additional capital allowance for the year. So remember that when it comes to disposal and the impact on additional income being added in tax or additional capital allowance being granted, what the Commission General does is for minerals and mining, it follows a general rule which we looked at. Remember A minus B and B minus A that we saw in part two, then it's the same principle here. Nothing to learn, nothing new to learn. What you need to remember is that under petroleum, what did we say? We are saying that where there is a disposal, the Commissioner General adds the entire consideration received to the income. We don't do any consideration received less um, written down value. No, we add the consideration received to the um, income of the person and tax accordingly. So remember, there's a big difference when it comes to disposals and how we treat um, any incomes or losses or further capital allowances that arise from disposals and you reduce the pool of depreciable assets by the written down value of the asset really straight forward then the principle of partly used assignments same principle same concept nothing changes let's just run through them when the year of assessment an asset is partly used in a separate mineral operation and partly used in another separate mineral operation commission general shall what a portion of capital allowance um, in that year between the two operations in proportion to the use in each operation remember i told you so let's say you have a minefield a and minefield b you use the same mining rig or the mining equipment on field a and field b we are portioned to the proportion if it's 50 50 we share um, the cost the capital allowance everything same principle as the petroleum guys right so where in the year of assessment a person assigns a mineral right the written down value of any capital allowance expenditure of that person at the beginning of the year is transferred to the assignee same concept under petroleum if you are transferring your rights your mineral rights to someone else you want to stop mining right what right you have at the start of the year or what capital allowance expenditure you've incurred or accumulated at the start of the year is transferred to the assignee or the person you are um, selling your mineral rights to or assigning your mineral rights to similarly when in a year of assessment a person assigns parts of the mineral rights same principle, the Commissioner General shall apportion the written down value of the capital loss expenditure between the person and the assignee in the proportion to what the interest retained and the interest assigned. Nothing changes under the oil and gas. So if you are deciding to scale down mining operations and you decide to now scale down from 100 to 50 percent, you keep 50, transfer 50, then you get to keep 50 percent of the capital loss expenditure. And you transfer 50% of the capital loss expenditure to the assignee or the new owner or the new part owner, um, if I can use that, of the mineral rights. Remember this? Then same principle. I saying where for the purpose of calculating the income of a person, a deduction is made in respect to capital loss expenditure. You cannot make that same deduction twice. Same concept. So if you agree with me, minerals and mining and petroleum almost the same apart from when it comes to the realization of petroleum assets or mineral assets where for petroleum assets what do we say for petroleum assets we include the consideration received in determining the accessible income of the person from petroleum operations when it comes to mining we revert to a similar concept of the a minus b b minus a concept even though the law doesn't use a minus b and b minus a be careful but that is a concept in case you just want to remember we've come this far let's look at some concept checkers let's see how well you remember this will be a simple one because um we'll focus really on the computational element um in the video on um, capital allowances looking at exam questions and all of those so please um, keep following the series and we will get there so what's the requirement here classify the asset into the appropriate classes and highlight highlight any peculiar issues that may arise due to the types of assets acquired so please pause this one and try it um do mcintyre company limited incorporated in june 2016 to manufacture plastic wear commence business in february 2017 accounts are made up to 31st march each year he bought or they bought factory building date of purchase october 16 it cost 160 000 cds plant and machinery september 16 cost 230 000 distribution van april 2017 cost 220 000 equipment 
November 16, cost 102,400. Furniture and fittings, February 17, cost 203,000. A saloon, Ben Saloon car, July 2018, cost 128,000. Here, I'm not asking you to complete capital allowance. We will do the computational elements in a proper um, exam driven, exam focused video. Here, I'm saying classified assets in that property class. So take the first line, second line, all the way to six, and just write, okay, the first one is class this, the second one is class that. When you are done, highlight any peculiar issues that may arise due to the type of assets acquired and the whole question. Just write what you think could be an issue based on all we've done so far. So I highly recommend that you hit pause here and try, give it a try. It's good to learn. If you get it wrong, nobody can kill you. Right? At least you learn something new. Right? So pause and give it a try. Okay, so I assume you paused and actually tried. Um, here, first thing you need to look at is look at the first um, first line. Do Macenta incorporated to manufacture? So they're a manufacturing company. If you remember from the table or from the capital allowance rates, what did we say? Class two assets, um, plant and machinery used in manufacturing will be class two. If it is not a manufacturing company, then their plant and machinery will be class three. Remember, this is very important. So in the exam, this is actually an adapted an exam question from one of the exam bodies. I'll mention their name. Um, what you need to know really is that where the question mentions, or if everything they say in the exam really matters. In tax, every single word means something. If it wasn't important, they would have mentioned it. So here they've told you to manufacture something. So they're a manufacturing company. So anytime you see plants, so for example, the second line, plant and machinery, 230,000, should go to class two only because they're a manufacturing company. If the same question said, do Macenta incorporated to be a retail business, then the same second line would have gone to class three. So not or missing out on the fact or not realizing just one phrase that they're a manufacturing company could be the difference between you putting an asset in class two and class three. I mean, that could mess your marks up big time, right? So please take note of that. Aside, let's try and classify. So factory building, if you all agree with me, class four, building structures, works of permanent nature, plant and machinery because they are manufacturing, class two, distribution van, class two. Would you restrict to 75,000? No, I don't think so. A distribution van is expected to be big, can carry a load of more than half a ton, can carry more than 13 passengers. So I will not restrict the van to 75,000. I'll put the whole 220,000 um, CDs in the van. Equipment, 102,000. This is not a plant. It looks like an equipment. So that will be a general class three asset. So 102,400 will go to class three. Furniture and fittings, class three, clearly. Benz, saloon car, it's a car, right? But this is a saloon car. A Benz cannot carry more than 13 passengers. They are a manufacturing company. They are not in the rental or vehicle rental business. So clearly, this 128,000, I'm not going to put the entire amount there. I will only capitalize up to 75,000 in the class two pool. Other things you need to watch out for is the, if you remember the formula, A times B times C over 365, what did we say? The C represents the number of days in the basis period, not when the asset was acquired. So I'm sorry to let you know that the whole of the date of purchase column is useless. October 16, September 16, April 17, useless. Only time you need it is to know in which year to capitalize. So not too useless, it has a use, right? But it will only help you to know in which year to capitalize or grant capital allowance to the asset. But it doesn't tell you anything about whether you should apportion. So for example, um, in the first sentence of the question, they say they were incorporated in June 16 and they make their accounts up to 31st March. So you need to calculate the, um, so they were incorporated in 16 but they commenced in February 17. What it means is that, yes, you were incorporated, but you have not started business. Remember, it's when you commence that matters. So here, they commenced business in February 2017. They make their accounts up to 31st March. So it means in their first basis period, they had just two months, which is February 2017 and 
March 2017, and they were done for the first year. So your C over 365 will be how many days in February? I'm guessing it's going to be um 2017 was not a leap year, was it? No. So um, you have your um, 28 days and you add your 31 days in March. So those two days is what will give you your C divided by 365. When we get to the computational elements, like I said, we'll look at these things in a lot more detail. So remember, in this question, there was a year of commencement. So that will affect your C. From the next basis period after February or March 17, you're going to use a full C being 365. Right? So um, these are things you need to look at. Um, in any capital allowance question, try to classify the asset yourself. See what will affect what. Read other manufacturing companies. See what the question tells you that will give you guidance. Or if your question mentions or finds a way to mention that they are vehicle rental business or they are into commercial rental of vehicles, please remember that in that case, you won't restrict the amount of vehicles to 75000 So the examiner finds different ways of testing different concepts. And every concept you need to know, we've covered here. So it's all about you trying to understand them and know what to do next. Let's summarize what you've done in capital allowances so far. A capital allowance is granted in respect of a depreciable asset owned and used by a person during a year of assessment in the production of the income of that person. You agree? There are five main classes or pools, class one, two, three, four, five. We are saying that what? Class one, 40% reducing balance. If you remember, class two, 30% reducing balance. Class three, 20% reducing balance. Class four, 10% straight line, class five, useful life of the asset. Capital allowance for petroleum operations and minerals and mining operations are placed in a separate pool. If you remember, one big pool, 20% straight line. The rules for capital allowance for petroleum operations and minerals and mining operations are very similar. There are, however, or there's however a key difference to be noted and we looked at. It has to do with when there's realization. Please remember these things. Your summary here is very important, right? There are specific threshold amounts to be remembered in the capital allowance. If you remember 75,000 for motor vehicles and then the 500 CDs limit for um, minimum value for a pool, among others. So let's stop here, um, bring capital allowance to a close. And the next time we miss capital allowance, we'll be looking at um, full exam questions to test your understanding. So until then, until I catch you in the next session, please remember smash the like button and as usual share this video within your network catch you soon <music>